um, it's a new year. It's 2021. Um, this week, I'm going to start off a series uh, for multiple weeks. And I, what I'd like is, uh, well, I'll get to that in a minute. I'll, yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. So years passed by. Uh, I was telling Brian actually just a minute ago, it's been, it felt like since we dropped, we dropped off a card for them a couple weeks ago, I saw them uh, just before Christmas. And I think it had almost been nine or 10 months since we'd seen you. I don't know the last week, um, that you were there when we were at the school, but, uh, we March 7th, I think was our last week there. And we thought we were going to shut down for two or three weeks, maybe a month and then be back at it. And well, we know what happened, huh? That didn't, that did not happen. We went online and then we started meeting out here in, what was that? September? September, like right after school started, I think again. Um, so new years are about new beginnings. And uh, I hope this beginning of this year is better than the beginning of last year, or at least it tails off and, and gets better throughout the year. Uh, although we do have uh, some things to celebrate. Um, I know people's uh, relationships have gotten uh, tighter uh, fam in families. I know that <laughs> I have a client um, who I was talking to and I was doing some business with last week. And uh, this client said, you know, we, her and her husband, they are empty nesters and their kids have moved out and now they're home and it's just them. And they said, uh, man, we didn't realize we had a lot of things to work on <laughs> because we were home alone and we didn't have children's life and all of that to go through. And uh, as a result, they dug into the relationship and their relationship has gotten better because they've worked on some of the issues that had been tucked under the rug. And I'm sure many of us have gone through that. We've learned new things about ourselves because we've all been put into some turmoil and some chaos in this last year. I would say 2020 is probably the most stressful year that any of us have had to endure um, on, on a whole societally, at least uh, in decades, maybe my whole life. Uh, I don't know. I don't know that the world has changed so much um, definitely since September 11th. You know, that was probably one of the bigger moments in my life. But the world uh, has changed a lot in a year. Uh, in a year, I mean, a year ago, the uh, economy was booming. It was fairly peaceful in society. There were no major wars being fought. Uh, things were looking pretty good. People around the world were being lifted out of poverty. Uh, we were meeting in a school and... Uh, uh, it was good. We were having good meetings there at the school. The church was growing. We had no reason to think that anything was going to change. And then it did. It changed a lot, didn't it? COVID came and then George Floyd came and um, those protests happened after that. And we had election turmoil. And now I've heard um, in California here, we've had a case of super COVID. Anybody heard of that? I mean, it's more infectious, I guess. I don't know that it's any more deadly, but it's more infectious. Um, and we don't know what to expect because if you, if we're honest, right, I think if you and I are all honest, none of us could have predicted what would have happened in the last year. Anybody, anybody could have predicted that? I don't think so. But with that in mind, we have this question of like, what's 2021 going to bring? You know, hopefully it calms down a little bit more than 2020 was. Hopefully it calms down. Um, how is 2021 going to unfold? If 2020 is any, ev has it, is any evidence, we have no idea how 2021 is going to fold. There's an, a, an optimism at this moment that, wow, could it get any worse than last year? You know, I think many of us would say, no, that's going to be a high watermark or maybe a low watermark, we would call that. Last year is going to be a rough year and we won't have another one like that. But if we're honest you and i we have no idea what's going to happen in 21. And the longer that all of this chaos goes on the more disheartening that it can become many of us thought how many of you thought there was going to be more than three months of lockdown i remember when i heard the term three months i was like no way people are going to stay in their house for three months not a chance no way they're going to shut down schools no way they're going to stop basketball and all the sport events and hockey and then and then what happened it all happened right we stopped everything in our lives and the 
the three month lockdown was like incomprehensible. Nobody thought we could have done that and yet we did. And here we are 10 months later with a bunch of questions. I mean, I have a lot of questions. I don't know whether you do. Some of the questions I have are, if we can't rely on society to continue rolling along, what can we rely on? What can we rely on? How can we thrive in a world where people are not not working and uh, people are staying at home and there's a, a, a virus that's going running rampant throughout our population? How can we thrive? How can we grow as individuals? How can we grow as communities? How can we grow the kingdom of God? How can we do these things? How can we become hope for other people? And I think that was one of the greatest struggles I've had in the last 10 months is I loved that our church would shut down and go do serves every other month and go out to the beach and serve and have conversations with people and bring hope and give out donuts and do beach cleanups and all the things that we did, all those things came to an end. And for me, that was very difficult. It was very difficult because uh, I thrive. I I love doing those things because it feels as though we're making a tangible difference in the world with the conversations that you and I are having. When people come up to us at our serve events, in the things that we do, uh, that we have planned, when they come up and they go, why are you doing this? Why why are you out here giving this stuff away? When people would be skeptical when we go out there and we'd be handing free stuff out. And you know what free means, right? Free means give me all your information. I'm going to try and contact you and uh, get any information or money or value from your life. I'm going to try to extract from your life. When you go into Knott's Berry Farm and they have somebody with a camera and a flash, you know they're trying to get you to buy a $25 picture later, right? I mean, it's not just, oh, we want to take a picture of your family. And yet when we went out, I could see the skepticism on people's face as we would serve them. And then it would change. They would become so curious as to why we're out there doing the things that we're doing. So in 2021, I have these questions like, how can we continue to do, be who we are in a world that is uh, ravaged by COVID and these lockdown orders? How do we stay positive? It's hard to stay positive when you're in your house every day, when you're like, all the events you looked forward to, uh, our our landlords that we rent from, they used to go to uh, like symphonies often. And all the symphonies, their public events are shut down. And you guys have the same things. I mean, they shut down everything in your lives for the most part, too. You're not doing the things that you normally would do. So how do we stay positive? How do we continue to have hope when it looks so gloomy? Well, if it was dependent on us and the power that we have, the reality is we probably should worry, right? I'm very aware of my personal resources and my personal power. I don't have the power to control much in my life. Very quickly, I'm reminded of my insignificance and my limited resources. Um, Any of you guys watch that video of that man who was jogging through the hills in California and a cougar started following him? Any of you guys see that video? Yeah. Yeah, that guy had no idea. That guy probably had money in his checking account. He probably had water in his car. He probably knew he was going to eat lunch when he was done. He had all these provisions, right, in his life. And the reality is he came smack dab and encountered a cougar on a run through the hills. And when you're in a situation like that, you feel very vulnerable, right? I mean, I don't know how about you guys. I was like, I was watching that with my wife. I'm watching it on a phone and I'm panicked for this guy. I'm like, what would I do? Would I grab a rock? Would I throw it at him? Would I run? Would I turn? Would I try to hide? What would I do in this situation? And I think if we focus on ourselves and what we are capable of, uh, worry and doubt are going to continue to creep in in 2021. Because we are limited in our resources. We are limited with what we have. We're more vulnerable than we seem on the surface. Right. I mean, your world can change. Janie and I and the kids, we went this past week, we went to Big Bear. We got around the back side of the mountain. We're going up. Right. And a bunch of cars got stuck and it's cold and it's snowy and they got stuck because the road got stuck. 
And very quickly, if you don't have, I mean, fortunately, we had chips and snacks, and we could have lived in our van for, you know, I don't know, two weeks probably, you know, it would have been fine for us. But uh, I came back and heard reports that people that didn't have provisions, they got stuck there on the road, they were getting cold in their cars, and they were getting into other people's cars, and people were sharing food, and those types of things were happening. It, it doesn't take but a moment for us to realize how insignificant we are and how vulnerable we are when we focus on our own resources. I have a thought experiment for us. I want you guys to take away your food, shelter, money. Pretty easy right now. We'll all take our wallets and all that, throw them right in the middle of the pond right here, and then say, you know what? We have to live without our homes, without our shelter, without access to our checking account. How does that make you feel? V very quickly, you feel like, Oh my gosh, I, my wife was out here this morning and she could, she didn't bring a jacket and she was feeling vulnerable to the elements out here. And she had my, my dad, fortunately, I think had an extra or my mom had an extra jacket in their car and they brought it for her. But the reality is, is we are vulnerable creatures. We don't know what's going to happen. Like we didn't know at the beginning of 2020, we don't know what's going to happen in 2021. And if we continue to look at what we can do with our own resources in our own lives, if we think I've got it all together, I can control this, I can make things happen, I can bend the universe to my will, you are sadly mistaken and you will find yourself with no hope and vulnerable in this coming year. If, if we don't have food, money, shelter, very quickly become worried, scared and unsettled. Throw in the threat of a cougar, like if a cougar came out of the woods right there, uh, I think we would all go running. And fortunately, I can run faster than some of you. So uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry for you guys. <laughs> I'm not getting eaten by the cougar. The truth is, without all these things money provides, we're very, very vulnerable. But the truth is also that as Christians, we don't have to have these feelings about all of these things that are going sideways in our lives. That's good news. We don't have to be concerned about what is going to happen if we fix our eyes on the one who has unlimited resources, on the one who knows what's going to happen in 2021 and 2022 and 23 and 24 and 25, if the world goes on and continues for that long. The truth is we don't have to be concerned, not because we're awesome, but because God is awesome, because God is faithful year after year, time after time. I'm looking at your faces and I know the stories of the things that you guys have gone through. And the reality is that God has been faithful in your life, through your life, has used you to help others and has used others to help you. And God has brought you hope because of his faithfulness in our lives. And, and 2021 could be just as concerning as 2020 was. But the reality is, if we focus on God and know that we have a good father, we didn't sing, there's a song, good, good father. The reality is, if we know we have a father who cares for us, we don't have to be worried and afraid and concerned. When we get our eyes off of our surroundings and we put them on God, things get better for us. Things get better for us. For those of us who have good earthly fathers or even mothers and have been provided for and cared for and nurtured our whole lives, we know what this feels like, right? There's not been a day in my kids' lives where they wondered where they were going to get their next meal. It's just not. I mean, the neighbor kids come over and they open the pantry door and they just take whatever is in there, you know. We had a one of our neighbor kids wanted to take a whole tub of bubble gum home this week, you know. Like if it was on sale, so I bought it and the kids like gum. And he came over and he's like, all right, where's the gum? And he picks up the whole tub and he's going to go right off home, you know. It's like, you know, he, he realized like, hey, there's provision here and I'm going to take it with me, you know. My mom and dad want it is what he said. It was kind of funny. But the reality is there are things that we never have to be concerned with when we have a good father. Like my kids, they've never worried about whether the lights were going to turn on when they switched the light switch on, right? Water, hot water. Anybody with me on hot water? My kids now, they want to get, they, they, you can't get them to take a bath, but they'll want to get in the bath in the morning just because it's cold. I'm like, why are you getting in the bath? Because it's warm. <laughs> I want to warm my body up. I'm like put a blanket and some clothes on, put a shirt on. My kids have never worried about food or shelter or heat or transportation. 
being able to rely on a faithful father is possible. And I know it seems difficult for us sometimes because when we're, it's, it's hard when you can't see that father, right? I mean, we know God's there, but any of you guys ever worry when you're in the middle of a situation and you're like, is God going to show up? I think maybe he's helping somebody else. I think God maybe forgot about me. I know people when they're going through a struggle, they're like they like the best Christians ever. They read their Bible and pray all the time, like to get noticed by God. Like He's not doesn't notice you or know what's going on in your life unless you're doing all the right things. The reality is we have a Father who knows us, who is not caught off guard, who is concerned about us and is using the circumstances and situations in our lives to grow us into stronger people, which we've been talking about over this, over the last few months, into strong people so that we can be a blessing to those around us. I thought about, I've thought about the story of Joseph and how uh, he ended up in Egypt and, um, God used him to provide for the people during the years of drought because God is using us to grow strong people. Now, now I wouldn't want to walk Joseph's life. If you go back and read his story, it, would, it was not a good thing early on. you know. But the reality is in these times through 2020, we've either had to grow or cower. Most of us have grown, I believe. And we're going to continue to do that so that we can be hope and we can bring light and we can bring life to those of people who are struggling because they don't know of their uh, holy God, the Father, their heavenly Father to put their eyes on. But they are worried and scared because of the circumstances around them. People are killing themselves in droves, sadly, because they have no hope and because they don't have a God a good father that they know that they can put their trust in. That's why I think this is so important in starting off 2021. To fix our eyes on the one who knows, and the one who cares, and the one who intervenes. So we've been talking about for a few weeks. Being able to rely on God the Father is possible. And that doesn't mean from time to time we don't struggle. How many of you guys know that you have a heavenly father that loves you? Know that he cares for you. Know that he is working things out for your good. And yet you struggle in having faith sometimes. Is it going to get better? Is it all going downhill? How bad is it going to get before it gets better? It doesn't mean that we don't struggle. What it means is that we have a loving father that allows sometimes he allows struggle to happen in our lives so that we can grow. I've used this analogy before. You know, if you, um, if a, a, a chicken, a, a little baby chick is pecking its way out of an egg, um, the strength that they gain from struggling with their wings and these birds that come out of uh, eggs that have to hatch themselves or butterflies that have to get their way out of a chrysalis, the very workout and struggle that they have getting out of the egg or the chrysalis is what prepares them for flight. And if they don't get that struggle early on, they don't get the strength that they need to survive and they die. So you and I, we seek comfort most of the time. My wife is over there cuddling in a brown heavy jacket and she's moving like this just to keep warm. The reality is we seek comfort, but the reality is that God knows the things in our life that bring struggle in our life, but he's going to see us through oftentimes are the best things that we need so that we can grow in dependency on him, in knowledge of him and in strength that we grow as people. I'll be honest. There are times in my life when I've been worried about finances. There have been times I've been worried about health for people who I know and who I love. The reality is, as I've grown in my relationship with Christ, I worry about far less. Because, because, because I've seen God show up time and time and time again. Not only in my life, but people's lives that I love in my parents' lives, in some of your lives, in most of your lives. I've seen God show up with provision for health, for finances, for jobs, for work, for all of those things. 
and God is growing us. He's using the circumstances around us, like in 2020, uh, to grow our faith in him as a good father. Why? So we will be more likely to share with others of our faith with them. I love how uh, I love how vocal Gino is oftentimes about his struggles, and he's he's willing to wear his heart on his sleeves because he's willing to share what God has done and brought him through with people who are struggling with hope themselves. I love that. Many of us, we, we think that our battles and our struggles, they're all just for us. But the reality is that God has used us and taken us through those things so that we can share and proclaim what God has done in our lives to say, look, I don't have it all together. I'm vulnerable. I don't have unlimited resources. I just trust God. And every time he shows up just in the nick of time, sometimes a little bit later than I was comfortable with, oftentimes a little bit later than I was comfortable with. But when I found myself down and out, when I found myself seeking because I had nowhere to go, I knew I couldn't do it on my own. God showed up and changed my life. Some of that is mental. Some of that is emotional. Some of that is financial. The reality is some of it's relational oftentimes. The reality is it's things that we can't fix on our own that God steps in and God intervenes. This is going to be a new year. It is. Every year is a new year. The reality is this year, if we keep our eyes on God, I believe we're going to grow. God is going to grow us and he's going to use the struggles that we've gone through as hope for others as we testify to the good that he has done, as we share about our good father to our friends, to those, hey, I lost my job too. And then here's what I did and God came through and I'm employed again. I lost my home. I, we lost this. We lost this. We lost a loved one. Many of us have had deaths in our families in the last uh, six months or 12 months or so. That's difficult. But God has been faithful to bring us through time and time again. And he will continue to do that time and time again. So for the next several weeks, we're going to study uh, about our father, about his attributes. I've got 15 different attributes of God uh, in ways that he is different than us and in ways that should bring hope to our lives if we put our belief in him. And that's the key because God can be God and God is God. All these characteristics that we're going to talk about for the set for these next few weeks, they are attributes of God. But the reality is if you don't tap into that power through relationship with God, you don't get the benefit of being in relationship with that God. Does that make sense? Any of you guys have a hair dryer? It's an incredible machine, right? Anything you plug in, you got a toaster. If you don't plug that thing in to the source of its power, it's about useless other than holding paper down. It's the truth. So many things need a resource, a power to make them function the way that they're supposed to. And you and I are no different. For us to uh, for us to function in God's power in this world, we have to be tapped in to the source. We have to believe we got to be plugged in and we have to know that, you know, what? as I step out in faith, God is going to come with me because the reality is he's already there waiting for us to step out in faith. We always think we're stepping out in front of God and it's not that way. God's already there waiting for us. We just don't see it until it happens. You guys ever been there? <laughs> You're like, man, I feel like I got to step out in faith. And it's like, eh, God's already waiting there for you. You just don't recognize it. He's already made a way. He's already transformed the situation, but he's growing us and using those times uh, for us to be able to grow. So for the next several weeks, we're going to talk about some of these characteristics. And I told you I was going to get to this from the beginning. This might be a struggle for some of you, but um, I'm either A, going to ask for volunteers or B, I'll be calling some of you to maybe talk about one of these in our talks in the weeks to come. Maybe one that um, I feel is uh, very specific uh, to you and you would have a great story to share about how God used uh, this characteristic in your life to intervene in your life. So if you guys are open to it, 
I'd love for you to come up to me after and say, um, hey, I'm, I'm open. Maybe you can send me a few and I'd like to take five minutes or seven minutes or 10 minutes or something and talk about some of these things. Uh, otherwise, I'll pick on some of you if I know, uh, if I know you got something great to say. Uh, because I love hearing from you. I, I, I mean, uh, I think of Linda, just uh, Linda, who's not here today. Uh, I think of the blessing that it was for me when she opened in prayer a few weeks ago. And how much um, seeing the display of her depth of relationship with God and how she talked to her father was just, it was very comforting to me. It was very comforting to me. She was at ease um, and she spoke to God as though he was right here because he is waiting for us to be in communion with him. So today... um, I'm going to go for a story of faithfulness. We've been talking about the Israelites for a few weeks as we went through our past series. And uh, I want to talk to you about, uh, just give you a 30,000 foot view of what happened, how God intervened. Many of you guys have read through the Bible, through the Old Testament. Some of us have not. But if we take a look at the Israelites, the Israelites were in Egypt uh, and they were there uh, they were growing in numbers. We talked about this several weeks ago. They were growing in numbers and Pharaoh became more and more concerned about the uh, Israelites growing in numbers because when you have a different people group it, within your people group and they are growing and flourishing in numbers and in wealth uh, in your city state, in your country, the reality is you could become a little bit concerned if you were a leader, right? Like, are they loyal to us? Or might they try and take over at some point? And this is are the thoughts that creep in. There's a growing fear into Pharaoh's head. There's a growing fear of the Israelites uh, and the Hebrews uh, growing in numbers and in stature and in wealth in the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh decides to have all the Hebrew boys, uh, the young Hebrew babies, killed. So scripture teaches us he had them killed. Why? Because um, if you're going to have an army, oftentimes, and back then for sure, it was going to be young men. And if you don't want an army to raise up from within your country, it would be wise to kill all the young boys so that people group doesn't have any young men to wage war against your people. And we're going to see God's faithfulness here because at first it seems... uh, It seems dreadful, and it is dreadful for the Hebrews, but the reality is God is faithful in every storm. God is faithful in every situation, and God gave one woman the thought to take her baby boy and put him in a basket and put him in a river where crocodiles swim. I mean, how many mothers would do that? Just think about that. I think oftentimes when we read Bible stories, we're like, oh, yeah, the mom took her baby and, you know, just put him in a bush. And just, hey, take him down there, put him in the river, let him float away. How many mothers do you know that even let their babies out of their sight? <laughs> you know, like they won't even let other people touch them oftentimes. Like, eh, there'll be two before you touch my child. You know, you've got germs and all that. But the reality is, and here's what happened. Moses' mother takes him, puts him in a basket, and floats him down the river. We don't let Brian out very often. <laughs> oh, he's that guy. <laughs> so, so we have baby Moses, right? And he's floating down the river, and he gets plucked out by uh, Pharaoh's daughter. And what happens? We, we, we see God's faithfulness in him being brought in and raised over a decade and longer. And then Moses grows up and Moses sees that his people are oppressed. They become more and more oppressed in Egypt. And the reality is he's like upset about it. He's like, these are my people. And then God does what? He speaks to Moses through a burning bush. Like that's kind of strange. You think God could get your attention if he spoke to you through a burning bush? So God does this. Right? Moses grows up, and what's he doing? He's, he's raising up a leader so that his people can be brought out of Egypt. He raises up a leader. Moses grows up, is concerned about the harsh treatment of his 
uh, people. He kills a man. He runs away. He's spoken to by a burning bush. And then God begins to use him and shape him. Not somebody who was outspoken and who thought, man, I, I got this. You know, he realized his vulnerability and insignificance also. And God said, no, I'm going to use you. I'm going to use you. So he sends him back into Egypt, right? And then God has plagues lined up for the Egyptians if they don't allow their people to leave. So Moses comes back and says, let my people go. And Pharaoh says, no. And then we get all kinds of plagues, one after the other. And finally, Pharaoh allows them to go. And they take off and they quit very quickly. Pharaoh changes his mind and he says, you know what? I think I want them back. Go chase them down or kill them or do, don't let them get away. And they end up at the Red Sea. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to ever swim across a sea. I'll swim across a pool. I'll swim across a river. I'll swim in a sea and I'll swim in a river maybe. But I don't want to ever try to cross a sea, especially with hundreds of thousands of people. How do you get out of a country and go through a sea with a hundred plus thousand people, women and children. And the reality is that God makes a way by parting the sea. We don't know how God did it because in my resources and in my understanding, I can't do that. I can't part a sea, but God can. And they grow across on dry ground and the waters part and then the waters fall and consume an Egyptian army that's following them. And after wandering in the wilderness, for how long? There you go. <laughs> Look at Bart's, Bart's on it. Come on up here, teach, man. I'm good. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. After wandering in the wilderness, because God always keeps his promises, and he had promised a promised land for his people to have their own land, God delivers the promised land to his people. Now, you and I could be very concerned, I think, because um, I think we, as Americans, we become impatient. Um, sometimes six minutes to cook my frozen pot pie is a little bit too long, and I have to snack while it's cooking. You know, there's other stuff in the pantry. I talked about my pantry already. You know, that's six minutes, that's a long time when you're hungry, you know, because you already waited too long because we can eat anything instantly. We're impatient most of the time. I think... Another thing I want us to think about in this coming year is what God is doing in our lives doesn't necessarily happen in the time frame that we think it should happen. What God is doing with our lives doesn't necessarily happen. I just laid out about 60 years. I, I laid out a long time for you guys in this time period. Now, some of the things that God is going to do in our lives and being faithful to us and to our families and for us is going to happen after we are gone because this thread of faithfulness continues on after generation and generation and generation so we can have hope that god is going to meet our immediate needs but that god is doing things far beyond our comprehension in time for things we have no idea or understanding of we i don't know why god gave me the three children that i have we pray for a foster child that we'll be able to adopt. I don't know why or how the work that we're doing in their lives, why they were raised, why my children are being raised by Janie and I with our unique perspectives and personalities that are being imprinted on them, the DNA that was put into each of us that is put into our children because God has a specific plan for each one of them. I don't understand and I cannot comprehend or even fathom the way God is rolling out this universe in time with his people through time. But God knows what he's doing. And he is faithful. And he will continue to grow us and he will continue to bring hope. I want to talk about the Israelites today because uh, our lives and our situations can oftentimes look very bleak. But I want us to be reminded because like I talked about, I don't journal. I encourage you to journal. I should do it myself. Uh, I want you guys to journal. I want you to write down those things because remembering God's faithfulness when you are struggling, remembering, oh yeah, I do remember when everything looked bleak and then God showed up and helped me through that situation. 
and it came out of the blue and it came right on time. To be able to see those things and read through those again gives us hope that tomorrow can be a better day. 2021 can be better for us, that we have hope to wake up in the morning and give every day our best and give every interaction with every person that we have our best to try to see the world through God's eyes and not our own. When we look through our own eyes, oftentimes it's selfish, right? Like I, I think oftentimes I think it's so, it, it just baffles me that people think, oh, if we just let, you know, let everybody just do what they want to, then it's just going to be a nice utopia. And I'm like, do you know people? Like, have you ever met a person? I mean, if there's scarcity, I mean, anybody try to get toilet paper like six months ago? Yeah? Anybody have a toilet paper delivery? Cause some, anybody you're trying to get some flour? Because, I mean, I remember buying flour, man. I was like, I don't have flour to make bread or pizza dough or anything. I'm like, come on over. I'll share. I, I mean, it, it blows my mind that we think that human nature is going to change if, uh, if, if, if we just let people live out their lives. It's like the reality is this world is chaotic. And if we start to see the world through our eyes and our needs, then we get, people can go crazy, man. I mean, I mean I, I'm oftentimes blown away by how civil a society can be when you know it's very precarious. It can change in a heartbeat. We, we saw these in, during the, some of the riots that we had here in LA, right? I mean, it doesn't, if you have a group of people and I observe this by watching my TV. It takes a lot for a group of people to start rioting and looting until just one person does something, right? There's, there's all this energy happening in society. There's things going on amongst us and there's angst and maybe anger and greed and fear and all these things happening, right? Frustration. And it like, it's like, wow, it's still pretty civil. And then one person, you watch, maybe you watch some of the uh, looting on TV or something. As soon as one window gets broken, then, you know, it's like all the windows get broken in one store. And then it's like every store. And the reality is things, things can change very, very quickly. And when we look through our eyes, the point I'm making is when we look through our eyes, greed, our, our eyes are tainted by greed and fear and all of these things that are ugly. But if we can see the world through God's eyes... If we can see every interaction that we have with another human being as a way to input, as a way to uh, encourage them, we can change the world. We can change people's lives. Many of you have friends. Many of you guys, um, I, I know people love you guys because of the way that you care for people in conversation, the things that you think to do for people when they are not around, the way that you bless one another and people. It blows my mind. It's like the way that you care for each other. I love it. I love seeing it. I love hearing about it. I love hearing. And that's how we're going to grow and change the world. And the reality is the more that we see the world through God's eyes, the less fear that we have about what 2021 might bring. Because it puts our brain in a dip. I'll give you a scenario. The other night, Gianna, she's very easy, very easily. She can go from having a good time to catastrophizing everything, just like in a moment. And, and she was catastrophizing something. I don't know, taking a bath or something like that. You know, she didn't want to get in the hot water at that point. And I'd said something just to make her laugh. Because I knew if I could get her from being upset or angry or frustrated and get her laughing, it would change the whole dynamic. It changed the whole circumstance. And I did, and it changed, and she went right off. The reality is we can do the same thing. When we bring hope, when we inject hope and love and grace and faithfulness into the world, we can change the world because people's brains will switch from being scared and lost and uh, having no hope to Oh, wow, there is hope. There are good people in the world. You ever know people who are mostly negative and then something, somebody does something kind for them and the reality is that like they change, like their whole demeanor changes in that moment. Like, wow, there still is good in the world. You know, it's what you focus on is what you see in the world. I have people come here and they, I have had people come up to me and say, man, the world is terrible, you know? And I go, that's not the world I see. 
It, it's, it's not. I mean, I realize there's brokenness in the world. I see it. I see the murder and the crime, and I see these things, this, the theft. I see all these things that you see. But the reality is if you look for the good, you will find the good, and it will change your outcome. It will bring hope into your life. You can live in a chaotic time and find hope and be happy and find joy in the little things. So for 2021, I, I want us to be reminded of God's faithfulness by uh, looking to his character. So we're going to take an in-depth look at God's character. What does God bring to the table? Because I know what I'm bringing to the table, and it's not a whole heck of a lot, right? I mean, I don't have unlimited resources when it comes to money or time or emotion. I can't even stay up more than like 20, 18 hours a day for long, you know. I got to sleep too. God doesn't sleep. God's not bound by time. God has all the resources in the world. And when we tap into that, you and I are going to be able to change people's lives effectively in 2021. I hope things get easier, but if they don't, I'm not going to give up and die and just say, you know what, we can't do anything because of COVID. We can't do anything because of lockdowns. We are going to find a way to inject hope into people's lives, to get their eyes off of their circumstances and onto a faithful God. We're going to share about our faithful God. We are going to rest in our faithful God. Because the reality is God is going to be the one who brings us through this. It's not, our hope should not be in a vaccine. Our hope should not be in financial success. Our hope should be in our father who is faithful uh, and true and good and loving. And when we get that, we are going to be able to change people's lives. I want us to be the most positive people in others' lives. It's going to change the dynamics of the relationships that we have all about. So for 2021, you and I, we don't know what it's going to bring. I, I wish I did sometimes. Maybe I don't. <laughs> Maybe if I knew what 2020 was going to bring, I would have said, nah, I'm not doing it. I don't know what 2021 is going to bring, but I know that it can be good if we walk hand in hand with our faithful God. Let's pray. Jesus, I we are reminded by your faithfulness. We look forward to uh, learning about your characteristics and what makes you God and us man. God, I'm thankful for these people that I get to do life with that bring hope to my life, um, joy to my life support to my family I thank you that we get to be a blessing to them also I thank you how you have brought us all together for I don't know exactly what but you do and I pray that we will continue to be faithful to your cause this cause that will grow closer to you through this next year as we learn more about you I pray that you embolden us and grow us in generosity and in care and in kindness and in grace, faithfulness and peace. I pray that you would put situations in front of us that would allow us to grow and be a blessing to others. I pray that we would be tapped into you as our strength comes from you. We ask these things in your name. Amen.